Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on the birth of Merlin and today we're going to get to hear from Prince but also one line from Clown because you know how this works. There's a sort of a longer bit that goes together with one little tidbit thrown in by Clown in the middle of it. So we're going to do it that way but that's act two, scene one. Real quick, what's been going on since then, we have a couple sets of lovers who are supposed to get married, but neither of the women really wants to. One of them's gonna go with it. The other one wants to be a nun. We have the Briton king who wants to marry a Saxon woman, which everybody else thinks is a terrible idea, including the very holy hermit who met the one woman and decided that she is virtuous enough because she's a virgin and her name is Modesta. So that qualifies her to be a nun. So he's gonna work with her on that. And we also heard that the king's brother is missing and they're hopeful that they're gonna find him. But at the beginning of act two, scene one, we got to meet Clown and his sister Joan. And Joan is hugely pregnant. Like she's gonna pop at any second, but she has no idea who the father of the baby is. So Clown and Joan are wandering through the forest because that's where she met the father looking to try to find the father again, but she can't really describe what he looks like or what his name is and she, cause she was like, you know, I, I didn't want to be so rude as to ask what his name was. He was so lovely and polite. And the clown is just like, this is, this is the most ridiculous thing that has ever happened. And in yesterday's monologue, clown sort of finished off by just sort of shouting out to the forest, if there's a man around that wants to be a father to my sister's baby, like, come on for it. And hey, obviously my sister's pretty easy, so you'll get to sleep with her too. And at the end of his monologue, somebody replies, somebody yells, ho, 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 ho. So the clown and Joan step back a little bit and in comes Ulther Pendragon, who happens to be the missing brother of the king. And he's wandering around the forest talking about this woman that he met who just struck him as so beautiful. And as he's like, you know, and, and she was lovely, but I don't remember her name. And the clown is like poking Joan like, you know, that's you. That's got to be you that he's talking about. And aren't you guys a perfect pair? Because neither one of you knows what the other one's name is. So Clown and Joan are kind of over here listening in while Ulther is talking about this woman who just absolutely took his breath away. And as he's describing her, he says, for having overtook her, as I have seen a forward bloodhound strip, the swifter of the cry, ready to seize his wished hopes upon the sudden view, struck with astonishment at his arrived prey, instead of seizure, stands at fearful bay or like Tamaria's soldiers who overtook the eyesight killing gorgon at one look made everlasting stand so feared my power whose cloud aspired the sun dissolved a shower pygmalion then i tasted thy sad fate whose ivory picture and my fair were one our dotage past imagination. I saw and felt desire. Pox of your fingering. Did he feel, sister? But enjoyed not. O oh, fate, thou hadst thy days and nights to feed on calm affection. One poor sight was all. Converts my pleasure to perpetual thrall. Embracing thine, thou lostest breath and desire. So I, relating mine, will here expire. For here I vow to you, mournful plants, who were the first made happy by her fame, never to part hence till I know her name. So what he's saying is he had seen this beautiful woman walking around the forest, but is, and he wanted to say something. He wanted to talk to her. He wanted to be able to pursue her. But as soon as he like got up close, he froze and couldn't say anything as has happened in, he makes a couple like battle analogies of people who are just sort of frozen and, and weren't able to act. And he's like, oh, but there was this the absolutely beautiful woman and I saw and I felt desire for her. And the clown's like, is that, is that when it happened? Did he feel you? But instantly the prince says, you know, no, but no, I didn't get to do anything. And because I was unable to do anything, then I'm gonna vow 
do you plants here that I'm going to stay here until she comes back or until I can find out who she was? At which point Clown like drags Joan out and is like, this is her, right? This has to be her. You two have met. This is, this is the woman that you're talking about. And Joan's like, do I know you? And, and Ulther Pendragon is like, I've never seen you people before in my life. And the clown's like, well, great. She can be your wife and she's got a baby on the way. So you can be a dad now too. And Ulther gets really upset about this. And the, there's a little bit of back and forth between them as they try to insist that he should be the father. And he tries to insist that he's not. And he ends up starting to beat up Joan. He's beating a pregnant woman now. It's ridiculous. But they end up making enough noise that Taclio and Oswald, who are both sort of messenger type people, come in and they're like, oh my goodness, it's the prince. We've been looking everywhere for you. Are you okay? You have to come with us. So Oswald and the prince ex exit and Taclio is, is still there. And Joan's like, do, do you know me? Was that you and me? Like, are you maybe the father of my baby? And Taclio's like, um, no, I don't think so. And Oswald comes back like, come on, you got to come with us. So Taclio leaves and Joan says to Oswald, um, do you know me? Did we maybe do a thing and maybe you're the father of my baby? So she's just, she's just going down the line. Any man that gets into her sight except for her brother, she thinks might be the father of her baby. And Oswald's like, no, that definitely wasn't me. And he goes to, and Joan at this point is feeling a little bit defeated. So the stage direction says like she sinks down, which really I think means she passes out, like she faints and they're like, oh my God, she's dead. But then, you know, she rouses, Oswald's gone and, and the clown's there and, and he's like, all right, come on, let's do this. Let's, let's keep going. Let's find your, your husband, father of your baby type person. And, and very begrudgingly on the clown's part, the scene ends there. So this, this whole plot line of Joan's baby and not knowing who the father is, is sort of like the third major plot line that runs through this. We've got the lovers, we've got the king marrying the wrong person and all the warlike political stuff that's happening. And then we've got who is the father of this baby. But also just to maybe plant in your minds, this play is called The Birth of Merlin and we have a pregnant lady. Anyway, we'll get further into that as we get further into the play. So come on back tomorrow for more. I'll see you then. Mwah.